I'm Jason Logson from Adventure-Logs.com talking to you from sunny northern Minnesota and today I thought about discussing with you the differences between the new Fly Surfer Sonic and Fly Surfer Soul show you some of the build differences and design differences between these two models and talk about some of the upgrades and differences with this latest generation of Sonic. So, without further ado, here they are. As you can see here, that's my brand new Sonic 3 11 meter. And here is my about a year, year and a half old Fly Surfer 10 meter. But let's talk a little bit about flying differences before I get into what's been improved on this cut. First thing you can see is that the Sonic 3 is significantly longer than the Soul. Again, that's only 11 meter and that's a 10, so size, they're pretty similar. But the big difference is this kite has a much, much higher aspect ratio than the Soul does. So what does that mean? Well, that means that the Sonic with the higher aspect ratio, it's going to have higher, more lofty jumps. You're going to have a lot more hang time. The bottom end is going to be better. Uh, you'll be able to create more apparent wind and create more power. So you'll also be able to go faster with this kite. It is a race kite, so uh, it, it, it has been designed for that. Where the Soul, that's more of a free ride kite. It has a much more of a delta D shape to it that helps with the relaunching on the water. The lower aspect ratio means it's going to turn a little bit faster, be a little bit more reactive, and it's going to drift a lot better than the uh, Sonic. Also, it's going to be a little bit easier to handle. You don't have to really worry about bow ties or twisting or anything like that. It's going to be a little bit more stable. Some of the other build differences between these two kites. Um, this is a much thicker airfoil. Uh, it'll dimple on the leading edge. This was designed purposely like this from Fly Surfer to keep the kite from uh, really overflying you. Keeps it you know a little bit more stable in the turns. Um, since this is a lower aspect ratio, it won't sit as high in the uh, wind window as the uh, Sonic 3. The Soul does have a little bit higher of a bar pressure. Personally, I think it's because the uh, Z line here is all the way on the uh, trailing edge. So I think they're a little bit more under tension. Uh, compared to the last generation though, the Sonic 3 does have a heavier bar feel than the Sonic 2. Um, some like it, some don't. To me, it's not that big of a difference, and I'm used to now the soles. It's not that, it's not so bad. And it kind of, you feel a little bit more connected to the kite. You can see that these uh, leading edge wire lines are right up against the fabric here, where on the sole, they're actually inside some, and you really can't see it. It's been designed this way, so basically, if you're constantly scraping this leading edge on the beach, you know, for landings or launches or whatever, it's going to wear less. You have a little bit more protection than the Sonic. Uh, they, they, they just did it because, again, they wanted this to be a little bit more of a beginner kite for people that aren't used to foil kites. They put that in there. It just kind of shows such the... Uh, the, such little details that Fly Surfer thinks about uh, when they design their kites. Uh, Sonic has again the single butthole compared to the two on the uh, sole. Uh, the bridles has definitely been upgraded I would say. Here you can see they're uh, you know it, they are this wax coated and they're quite nice and they have these uh, pink little line connectors where on this generation 
Uh, it's gray. These are a little bit thinner. I think they're a little bit more waxed. And uh, they, uh, they have gray little line connectors. Also, uh, the color scheme is different. This is more the traditional red and green, which I like. And uh, the Z line, there's really no difference on the Z line with, uh, you know, you really can't tell looking up at the bridle uh, which is the Z. Um, but on the Sonic here, they've now made a very, very bright, thicker Z line. This compares me to the uh, the smaller Son. Uh, this, uh, this reminds me of this uh, my smaller soles. The Z lines are a little bit thicker in different color. They continue that on here. I would say the bridle lengths are about the same. Sonic is a little bit longer, but um, if my memory serves me correctly. The uh, it's sh it's it is shorter though than what the Sonic 2 was. As you can see, these are the uh, traditional green and red. Where this time in this generation, Fly Surfer changed the bridle up, so red is now orange. Excuse me, and green is now gray. I kind of like the traditional, just keep it standard red and green. I understand why Fly Surfer did this. I think their new bar is this color, so they're just matching it. But it's kind of a safety feature, and I just wish it would just be an industrial standard. All right, now, so let's talk about what has been improved on this newest generation of Sonic. Five years, I would say, between the two. It might be a little bit more between the two generations were uh, released. I know I was waiting a good three years for this next gen that never came. And there's a very, very good reason. Personally, I don't think. Personally, I really wouldn't call this the next generation of Sonic. Honestly, to me, this is just a whole new kite. Um, at first, Fly Surfer tried to approve upon the Sonic 2, and they really weren't getting much out of it. The Sonic 2 was just so well designed that it was hard to squeeze anything more out of it. So, what they start the next avenue that they started working on was taking the the VMG Fly Surfer's uh, latest race kite and just kind of soften it up a little bit make it uh make it just a little bit more user friendly uh tone it down a little bit and they came up with a success so what does that mean well the shape is different I, uh, i'm pretty sure I, the wing tips are designed a little bit different on the sonic 2 they had these kind of like and the Sonic FR, they had these kind of like wing tips where these would stick out a little bit when inflated. It doesn't have that anymore. Uh, again, like I discussed before, the fabric is all new. It's the same fabric as the sole, which has made a huge difference, uh, especially on the leading edge. They used the Lotus on the leading edge last time, and uh, it just, to me, the Lotus, which is a really, really good fabric, it's very, very durable and very light and airtight, but it just doesn't hold its shape as much. So you would get more dimpling on the leading edge uh, in higher winds or when you're going faster, and that definitely did hurt performance a little bit. It was kind of like the sole, but the sole was designed that way. They changed the sizes too. Uh, they reduced one less size. Used to be able to get the Sonic 2 in a 7 meter. I really wanted to get my hands on one, never did. This starts at a 9 meter. So it's got 9, 11, 13, 15, and 18. Um, also, like I said before, the bar pressure is uh, a little bit higher than it is on the Sonic 2. It, uh, the Sonic brought with it the long mixer test from 
the sole. The sole was the first kite from Fly Surfer to do it. So this is really nice. They don't even recommend the short mixer test anymore. All they recommend doing is the long mixer test. So that's really nice. Also this has the PMAs like uh, the sole does. So if it's acting really weird and you can't fix it in a bridle at, or at the bar, you can go inside and you can adjust the, the top or bottom sheet and change the way that this kite reacts basically when it's not under tension. It relaunches so much better than the last generation did. Um, there's been times where I've just been messing around with it and I've been amazed by how it'll still relaunch. There's, this, there's been no way whatsoever with the last gen and this will still do it. Um, also you can see Again, this is a little bit over a very, very hard year old. And you can see these are deflated and the uh, leading edge are up and the intakes are open. This is huge. This, this was really good. They, they really did this more with uh, the soles when they really started doing this. And it's made a really big difference. Uh, inflation time is much faster now with the Sonic 3 than it was the Sonic 2. Uh, the intakes stay out of the water when it's on the you know when you uh, crash it so it's it doesn't take on as much water the sonic 3 does still take on more water faster than the sole i think uh, mostly because there's a lot less space between that last intake and the wingtip compared to this uh, sole so i think that you get more water uh, coming in but something that they did upgrade which is different in the sole is these dump water dump uh, valves these uh, water exit holes this is new from fly surfer and this is amazing it's amazing how fast this kite will just dump all this water out I've never seen anything like that I mean if you're just a little bit patient even I mean you fill up a third of this kite with water you got enough wind to put a wing tip up and just sit there it will just piss out all of the water really fast it's quite awesome uh, I've, I've never seen anything like that and also uh, fly surfer has changed their uh, usable wind zones for this uh, sonic 3 they made it a lot more conservative this kite has a much smaller wind window. It, in fact, I feel it has a larger wind window. It's uh, more stable at higher higher speeds, and uh, it's just a little bit easier to hold down. But Fly Surfer decided to be just more conservative for the people that are new to these kites. Um, me, I guess, what I would do is I would do. Hey, this is where it's. If you're a beginner intermediate, this is your wind zone. And if you're more advanced, this is even more. But personally for me, I've been cutting for about a decade now. I don't look at the uh, wind range. You just kind of know. But that's why, if you're curious why the wind ranges are published much, much less with this generation, it's just because of that. It's been asked before, and uh, I'll talk about it again in this video. Which kite is for which? What do you want to use it for? So the sole here, to me, is much more designed for higher, gustier, unstable winds. Not to say that the Sonic is bad in high winds, especially this latest generation. They're great. They're really great in high winds, and you can boost forever. But they're just not as good if that wind isn't as clean. If I was talking about ultimate low end, Sonic. If I wanted to get a big kite, Sonic. Small kite, Soul. And again, if you are mostly hydrofoil and you're more of a, a, and if you like to go fast on your hydrofoil or you like to really jump high on your hydrofoil, that's the kite you want. If you're more of a strapless surf kind of hydrofoil guy, 
That's the foil you want. If you are a beginner, I would definitely choose the sole. Now, it doesn't say that you couldn't jump right onto the Sonic 3. It is still a very well behaving kite, but it's going to be a steeper learning curve. You're going to have a little bit more issues with twists and things like the bow ties and stuff that you're going to have to deal with. And it's going to be a little bit more frustrating until you get used to the kite. So and with the sole, you just kind of jump on. It's very much like, like an inflatable a lot. Uh, while the Sonic does relaunch a hell of a lot better than the last generation and it does really well, the sole still, hands down, is easier. You can, you can one hand relaunch this by just pulling on one steering line but it's not not as easy as this uh, this I still think is just is the easiest relaunching foil cart ever designed yep so uh, there you go a little quick and dirty comparison between the sole and the new Sonic 3 some of the build and design differences how they ride differently also uh, some of the upgrades that Flyserker made on this new generation of Sonic and uh, kind of how it flies a little bit differently. It's been a long time. We've been waiting quite a long time for this kite, but uh, it's been worth the wait. Um, stay tuned. Uh, next video up should be me taking these two kites out back to back in the same wind, same bar, same conditions on the hydrofoil and on the twin tip. You know, testing it out on the low end, on the high end, and kind of just showing you the differences between the two, how they fly differently, react differently, things like that. Uh, also, pretty soon I'm going to have a, a video coming up with uh, the new Peak 4 13 meter. If you don't know, the uh, Peak series of kites from Fly Surfer is a single skin foil kite. So basically, that means that there is no bottom skin. Just top skin, and that's it. Uh, so, what that does, so what that does, it means it, it makes the uh, lower end so, so, so much more, and it drifts so much more. Originally, the peaks were designed as a snow kite only, but uh, within this last year or so, they've really become popular on the hydrofoil. I've had a three meter now forever as my ultimate high wind kite. It's really fun in surf, and Fly Surfer has uh, sent me a 13 meter to test out, and I'm really going to check out to see what the ultimate bottom end is on it with hydrofoil, how comfortable it is to fly, can you use a twin tip on it, and most importantly, how's that relaunch? So make sure you subscribe. I got plenty of content. Also, some of my past videos show some of the unboxing and things like that. If you're new to foil kites, I have a lot of instructional videos, how to launch, how to land these by yourself, things like that. So there's definitely a lot of content and more to come, so make sure you subscribe. Also, I would appreciate any kind of thumbs up, really helps. And always looking for feedback, positive, negative, whatever. You got any questions I'm pretty good about responding to, so just let me know. So again, this is Jason Logson from Adventure-Logs.com. Appreciate you watching, and I'll see you on the water. Thanks.